Hey guys, just thought I'd bring you uh, the final Cub update of its rebuild. We uh, went with a new motor setup, a uh, new landing gear setup that it took us a few times to get just right, but now we got it just perfect. So I'm going to explain to you uh, exactly what we did in case you might want to, we're considering upgrading your landing gear motor. Um, uh, on the landing gear, I just bent a piece of aluminum as I explained in the previous video it was really cheap and easy got a couple of axles from the hobby stop the Dupros, and uh put some bigger tires through there it was actually a really easy setup but before i show you all that i'm going to tell you a little bit about the motor uh went to hobby king got it the turner g outrunner and it is a 1050 kv and an 18 amp motor and back that with a 25 amp plush turner g ESC with built-in BEC and we're running that on the stock 1300 milliamp three cell park zone battery and getting about nine minutes of flight time um, and the motor and the ESC runs completely cool never ever gets warm at all so it turned out to be a pretty good uh, setup with the motor the prop we've been using we've tried a few different props we're doing nine by six um, seems to work the best and right now I got a 9x6 on there. I've tried a 9x5 and it just was it wasn't it was a a little too uh a little too weak for this plane because we've added a lot of weight and stuff. So it flew with the 9x5 but it kind of lumbered. So we're, we're sticking with the 9x6. I uh, had a 9x6 sport prop on there. Yeah, I'll show you the difference. It it's fatter prop. It's it's got more surface area. But with this prop, it it was just a monster. It it had even more power. You could fly it even like less throttle. It seemed to keep it up. And but either prop does really well. In fact, I really like this one. It's uh it's doing really well for us right now. The one that's on there. It's just a uh, a nine by six electric prop. Got at the hobby shop. So that explains that. So if you're gonna upgrade your motor to brushless, 1050 kV works great with a uh, if it, ours was an 18 amp, so we just we got a 25 amp ESC, relatively cheap to only $12 for the motor, and I think another 12 or so for the ESC. So really couldn't beat that. Um, moving on, took a, took off the wing spars and was flying it around because I didn't really, being that they're plastic, I didn't really think they had a purpose, but they actually do. So I went ahead and put them back on there. So if you're wondering about taking them off, you can. But after a while, the wings will start to flex quite a bit. And uh, you're going to want to have some sort of wing supports on there. Um, I thought about once the wings break, maybe putting a, uh, an apprentice wing on top and having aileron and everything and a, a reinforced spar. But I'm not going to worry about that until these wings are bad because everything on this plane still seems to be in really, really good shape. Uh, so I'm going to move on and show you guys the landing gear. This is the landing gear setup that I did. Really simple, just took a stock piece of aluminum, made some simple measurements, and uh, I'll include them down below in the description for the aluminum, the, the, the bends I made. Um, just used a hacksaw, it took literally five minutes to make that bracket, and it's taken a beating. I mean, it, it looks kind of a little tweaked, but this thing's run into curbs, sidewalks, all kinds of stuff you can imagine. Um, I mounted it. The best way I found to mount it, um, I glued it directly at first with epoxy. And in one rough landing, I hit a curb and it just broke right off. And the, the, the epoxy didn't have any good bond to the, the foam. Um, so then, I, after a lot of thinking and thinking, came up with this idea... I just drilled a hole right through the side of the foam body. Now you want, if you do this, you want to make sure it's in front of the battery, in front of the battery box, if you can see, because that battery box area is hollow. You don't want to be in there because that's where your box reinforces the foam. You want to go right after that and just make a hole and uh, make it kind of snug for your dowel towards kind of a snug fit. And then I just stuck a wooden dowel through there 
and I used hot glue on everything this time and hot glue seems to be the ticket it's really strong you're not going to budget out of there um, at all so just once you get the hole and once you get your your dowel set up the way you like it the right length pump both sides full of hot glue and stick it through there and if some hot glue gets on your dowel just kind of cut it off with an exacto blade okay so then the idea is you're going to want like a quarter inch piece of uh, ball supply as a barrier between the foam and the metal because uh, I tried the dowel with uh, the zip ties before and just sticking to the foam and it performed great but after about five or six flights it started to compress the foam a little bit so uh, all I did was um, fill in the compressed foam with hot glue cut this piece to size and stuck it on there Put a little bit of hot glue on my landing gear to um, just to keep it steady so I could put the zip ties on. And then uh, I put two black zip ties, or the medium strength ones, and I put them on, I put the locks on opposite sides to make equal tension. But the good thing about this is now, I mean, it's just so sturdy. It sits. It sits proper. It's almost exactly where the stock gear was. It, um, the center of gravity wasn't affected that much because it lost a lot of weight with that brushed motor. And uh, if it takes a really rough landing, all that's going to happen now is the zip ties are going to get loose. And uh, that's going to be your weak point. So if your, your zip ties and your landing gear... If they get loose, all you do is is uh, either pull on them and tighten them, or cut them off and put new ones. It's it's good. It's a good thing if you can choose your own weak spot. So I wanted to take the foam being the weak spot out of the equation if I, if I could help it. But this is what I did, and uh, we love flying it now. Now now she flies like you know a dream, like we think she should have came. But that's the fun of this: uh, designing your own parts, I guess, fixing things, and seeing what other people do. Um, this is the only landing gear this big and sturdy that I've seen on this plane on YouTube. And I've looked and seen a lot of guys do a lot of other mods that I've, I've taken like the, uh, the support up here and, um, and, uh, you know, taping up your, your battery tray and stuff like that. But I've never seen, uh, a landing gear mod on the cub that, that's that, uh, sturdy. So I just wanted to bring that to you guys and uh, give you a final update. Uh, she flies great, and I hope you guys have happy flying. And if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them. So I'll go ahead and give you the specs of the parts that I used to complete this project. On the nose bracket, I didn't buy the custom bracket. I know you can get one for 15 bucks. It's a custom conversion bracket. I just took the same strip of, of aluminum for the landing gear. And I bent my own brackets. It's not that hard. You you mount it straight to the uh, firewall, um, in the exact same holes. Use the exact same holes. I just put a bolt through the fi the firewall, the plastic firewall, and the bracket, and tightened it with a nut, and then glued the firewall back onto the foam. And then the thrust angle was the same, and everything was the same. So. If you guys want, if you request it, I'll take off the cowl one of these days and make another video to show you my custom bracket. Maybe I'll do that. So anyway, guys, you, you guys take it easy, and I just wanted to bring this to you. All right? Till next time.